Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. He's back, and well, we've got new bikes, hubs, rims, and even some prototype tyres. And our main talking point this week, you're gonna love this, right? Cool. The next bike you buy, should it be rim brake or disc brake? I don't know why you do this, but it's gonna be fun. Can of worms. Oh, yes. It's now time for our main talking point, and this week we're discussing a very divisive issue. One that has split the nation, divided families, broken friendships apart. Which bike should you buy next? A rim brake bike or a disc brake bike? Now, we get asked this a lot, so we've decided to address it. Yeah, I mean, a few shows back we did have a vote which looked better, rim brakes or disc brake bikes, and the results were pretty conclusive. I forgot what you rigged them at, but it was about 79% <laughs> in favour of disc brake bikes. I have, to, I have to say I agree with that, I think they do look better. Yeah, I think I'm kind of inclined to agree that on modern bikes, disc brakes can look really good. Yeah, but this isn't about what they look like. This is about all-round performance and day-to-day -day living. And there are advantages and disadvantages to both systems. So what we're gonna do is weigh them up and then go from there. And then you can decide, depending on the riding that you do and where you like to ride, what works best for you. The weight. Typically, a rim brake bike is gonna be about half a kilo lighter than its equivalent with a disc brake bike. And well, sometimes even more than that. Yeah, and this may or may not matter to you, but if you race up hills, then it could be significant. And also, the lighter the rider, the greater proportion of the overall percentage of mass the bike represents. So, lighter riders stand to gain more from a lighter bike. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, disc brake bikes will get to the same sort of weight as a rim brake bike as technology advances become more and more you know, thought out. But right now, it's not there, which yeah. is probably one of the reasons actually why we don't see Grand Tour contenders using disc brakes because yeah. they want to make the most of what they can when it comes to going uphill. Yeah, and it's still difficult to build a, a UCI limit 6.8 kilogram bike with hydraulic disc brakes, especially yeah. an aero one. Mm. So next up is comfort. Now, this doesn't apply to all bikes and models, but sometimes the disc brake specific model of a certain bike can, you know, be harsher to ride, more stiff and less comfortable than the rim brake version. And this often happens when you've had a bike that was originally designed as a rim brake bike, and then it was subsequently retrofitted with discs to become a disc brake bike and wasn't designed from the ground up as having disc brakes. Yeah. And it's kind of like because you've got the added reinforcement to cope with the increased brake strain and torsional strain from the, the caliper from the disc brakes and also through axles in there, it can just make it a bit stiffer and harsher and less comfortable to ride. Yeah, actually I really agree with you on that. The first generation of disc brake road bikes were quite often real bone shakers to ride, weren't they? Mm. Just because of that, you know, there wasn't the thought out processes of the design refinements of a, of a specific frame. Which brings us on to handling. Uh, and well, with the added weight of a disc brake bike, sometimes they can feel a little bit sluggish, can't they? Mm. To accelerate when you get out of the saddle. And then combined with generally, they tend to have a slightly longer chain stay. Not all of them, but most of them do. Gives you a longer trail, longer wheelbase, that kind of thing. So it's not quite as sort of racy feeling almost, is it? Yeah, but it's a bit of getting used to, I guess. That's what. I'm yeah, it, it can be, but you know, it's something that not all bike manufacturers have as well. So some do have the same geometry now. Mm. So it's things that are changing, and also the flip side to them being sort of stiffer as well can be an advantage. So, for example, you know, if you're a powerful rider like Chris Opie, who mm. you know loves sprinting, he would go for a disc brake bike every day of the week because yeah. he, the stiffness from the through axles really stands out to him and he loves it. Yeah, he even said actually earlier on in the office, he would like to have a rim brake bike with through axles, didn't he? He said, imagine how cool that would be. Well, yeah, he'd like to try it out. Yeah. yeah. Don't fancy building one of them. <laughs> braking performance. There is no doubt about it. If you want superior braking performance, discs are the way to go, particularly if you live in mountainous areas or very wet areas for sure. Yeah, I don't dispute that at all. I have consistently descended faster, both in the wet and, crucially, the dry <laughs> on disc brakes. Yeah, if, undoubtedly, yeah. they're better, but 
when I'm, you know, riding my bike and I'm descending, I'm not being paid to race. And most of my descending I do is on open roads with traffic coming the other way. So consequently, I don't like pushing it on descents to the point where I, I need disc brakes on that on that limit. I prefer to sort yeah. of just take my time and enjoy it. And if, if I'm riding with friends and I'm racing my mates, I prefer to race them up the climb where the lighter bike will give me the edge and then just take it easy on the descent. And especially if it's wet as well, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna back right off. I'm not gonna take any risks. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Do you know, I never take risks anymore going down hills yeah. at all. Um, and it's really worth pointing out as well, when I've been riding on a disc brake bike for quite some time, you get so used to how late you can actually brake with mm -hmm. anything really that you're faced with, you know, out on your, on your ride. And then when you swap over to a rim brake bike, it's surprising how much further you have to start thinking about those actions. Mm. You know, you can catch yourself off guard. It's like why cyclocross riders, you know, at first they were very slow to sort of embrace the disc brake culture before realizing actually they could race into the corners and like literally through them rather than scrubbing off a bit of speed and going around at quite a leisurely sort of pace. Mm. It's uh, really changed those, those styles of races. Mm. Right, next up is traveling. Hmm. Now, I travel a lot with bikes, not just on GCN adventures, but my own adventures too. He's like Pee Wee Herman, the big adventure. Yeah, well, it's why I'm never here on the tech show. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> but in, in all this experience of traveling with bikes, without any shadow of a doubt, when it comes to packing bikes into cars or into bike boxes, rim brake, it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to worry about, you know, slightly bending or knocking your rotors in transit, which nope. can, can then cause them to, to, to catch. Uh, often I have to remove the rotors in transit to stop them catching, but that just adds more time on and it's another thing to do. Um, and you also don't have to worry about your calipers closing on rim brakes, you know, when you pull the lever yeah, when there's true, no, yeah. no uh, rotor in there, and then you end up having to prise them apart in a car park at the other end. Yeah, or worse still is that the pistons actually pop out of the caliper. Yeah. yeah. That's not pretty. Yeah. And I've got to say, actually, that this is probably the one thing, whenever I speak to any pro mechanics, and I say, oh, how are you getting on with your disc brakes? They always say, you know, fine, generally. The only problem for them is the travel. Particularly with air travel, they say they always have to bleed them at the other end. And that is just another job which they have to add on to, well, the longest day of any person working yeah. in a bike team, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that sort of follows on with maintenance as well. Yes. So, I mean, in, in my experience of maintaining brake systems, and I'm sure you'll agree with this. Like, <laughs> well, don't say that yet. <laughs> well, rim, rim is easier. You're changing a cable, uh, just a simple brake cable and a housing, and or just some brake pads on a rim brake, yeah. is a quicker job than having to bleed a brake. Oh yeah, a brake. yeah, undoubtedly, yeah, yeah. It's less stuff you have to carry with you. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, the, the, the small little things like day-to-day -day bits, like brake pads and stuff is just as quick, but from a full system setup, yeah, it's much longer. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't do it as often as a mountain bike mechanic would say, but yeah, it's definitely a, a lot quicker on a rim brake. But there are some ad advantages to disc brake. So this, I find that the service interval, if you will, um, between having to, you know, bleed a brake system compared to having to change a cable, I find it lasts much longer on a disc brake yeah. system if it's set up properly. But when you do have to do that job, it's a bigger job. Yeah, they're also less influenced by, you know, outside characteristics, you know, uh, really bad weather and things like that. With rim brakes, your standard Bowden cable, that soon becomes really sort of messed up, doesn't it, from grit and grime and everything. Whereas, well, it's a completely sealed system, with yeah. disc brakes, so you've got that major advantage. Yeah, and another big advantage is rim wear. You oh, don't yeah. get rim wear on a disc brake bike. No. Like disc brake wheels, you don't have to worry about your rims wearing down if you ride them in dirty, wet roads, which is potentially a big, a big advantage over over a rim brake bike. Yeah, too Especially right, if yeah. you've got fancy rims and you want to ride them in bad conditions. Yeah, all year round and make everyone else jealous. Do you know what, that's one thing actually I'm really jealous about when I see someone in what? really bad weather and you're out right. I put like, you know, some old training wheels in a bike mm. and I ride with someone with disc brakes and they're on a pair of really bling wheels. I'm like, you are so lucky today. It's usually so, me. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> when he's out traveling. <laughs> right, decision time then, Ollie. Yeah. What are you going to get on your next bike? You know what? I've got a couple of disc brake bikes at the moment, mm. so I think I'm going to get a rim one. 
So I've got both bases covered. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if you had to make the choice, take away those two, those two <laughs> disc brake bikes you've got, and you've got to just choose one. You can't just equal it out. Oh, it's tough. Oh, it, I, I'd quite like to have a go at some hill climbs in September. Heard it here first. I might have a go. Okay. But uh, so a rim brake bike being lighter would be good for that. Yeah. Um, I've got a few set of rim brake wheels lying around as well yeah. that would become redundant if I just had disc brake bikes. So it'd be nice to make use of those. And I think also just where where I'm at right now in terms of the riding that I'm doing and where I ride, a, a rim brake bike just suits me a, a little bit better. Mm. But I have to say, if, if I did live somewhere where there was steep climbs and technical descents, and you know it, it rained quite a bit, like North Yorkshire or yeah. the Lake District. Then, without doubt, I'd go. I'd go disc. Yeah, I, I've got to agree with you on that. I mean, also, I mean, any kind of off-road riding, yeah, disc brakes the way forward. Forget about rim brakes mm. on that because it's just these days. I can't believe how well bad those brakes were. Actually, mm. you know, old V brakes, cantilever brakes. Caliper rates if you're really old. Um, and I've got to agree with you as well. It, it is all dependent on the, the terrain, the weather and everything. You know, back when I was living in Belgium, Belgian winter, there is no way I'd want to use rim brakes, just purely because of the number of brake pads I was getting through. And that's even on pancake flat roads. But in the summertime, well, rim brakes were absolutely fine. So, it, I mean, it is really horses for courses, isn't mm. it? But it's a tough decision to make. This is this is the thing, right? It It's... A unique problem depending on you where you ride you know the kind of riding that you do and there are advantages and disadvantages to both yeah it's not that quite straightforward is it what did the viewers vote for though yeah we did a poll on social media we to did. see what you think well overwhelmingly oh, here we most of you would choose to buy a disc brake bike next right? 66 percent so that's amazing. It's a lot, yeah. Yeah, like like we did on the last poll. If we had asked that a year or two, you know, a year or two before, the results I feel would have been totally different. Yeah, we'd love to know your thoughts and comments on this though. So let us know in the comments section down there. What it's heat, it's going to get heated. I don't yeah. know why we do this to ourselves. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting. And yeah. oh, I tell you what, I wonder yeah. how the uh, rim brake extinction clock's doing. There, isn't it? Not long to go now. Right, last week, well, Chris and I, we showed you our first bikes and we asked you to share us photos of your first bikes. And I've got to say, it's such a special moment, isn't it? And, here, well, just here's some of our favourites. Yeah. Let's have a look at them. Right, who's first up, mate? Uh, it's Rajes from uh, B Katak. And there he is. Yeah, on his little on his bike, bike there. Looks like he's in his back garden. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Can't quite see the face, but I bet there's a big smile behind that left arm. <laughs> yeah. I bet. I bet there's a big smile. Yeah. Not sure that's the best way to get onto the bike, but I think he's not sat on the saddle. He's no, sat. He's, he's sat on like the, on the, the rack. rack. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like a long rider. It's like a low long rider. Cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, next one, Daniel in his backyard, Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA. I think this one. Well, from 1953 or 1954. That is so, that's like Pee Wee Herman on his big adventure. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the like little wry smile looking into the sun. I love the big tyres on that bike as well. Yeah, it's like, like a proper cruiser bike, isn't it? Yeah, that's a cool bike. That's nice, that. I like the bricks in the background, or the stonework. Yeah, Very well, nice. a bit, bit of dry stone walling yeah. looks like there. Yeah. Nice. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Tom Ashtabula from Ohio. And there he is. I mean, he's not very old, though. No, I reckon that's probably about the same era, looking at the, the bagginess of the trousers. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and a trike. Yeah, a nice little trike there. I mean... You don't see many trikes these days. No, no, I think ch children these days are not blessed with tricycles. No, Basically, no, it's, it's like a mini penny farthing with an extra wheel. Well, it's like, <laughs> you get um, Yeah, yeah, but it's sort of like balance bikes have taken over a bit, yeah. where we used to have trikes, but yeah, and that's really cool, yeah, with the, the pedals on the front wheel. Yeah, just, you know. it's. it's have you ever seen competitive tricycle races at time no. trials? Yeah, it is a thing. I've even seen tandem <laughs> trikes as well. Maybe we could get you on one of them. Um, right, Pretty next cool. is Ted from San Anselmo, California. Probably said that all right. Look, look at that little smile on Ted's oh, face. No. Again. That's He's delighted, similar. isn't he? He is, yeah. It's pure delight. I mean, that's from the 50s. It's, it's got to be, it got any brakes on that bike. It must be a pedal back brake. But a big smile, turn up trousers. Those trousers probably lasted Ted five years. 
the length of them. They probably did. Enough about his fashion, but that's almost the same bike as the as the one of Daniel. It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love. I, I do you know? I, I absolutely love this because it's, it's cr the, that's it's a cracker, isn't it? The proud moment. It's awesome just seeing how how bikes have changed as well. Yes. Looking back at the old bikes. Uh, next up, we've got Marcus from Banning, California, US of A. Everyone in America speaks the same. Yeah, they do, don't they? It's yeah. weird, it's weird. Yeah. I do actually ring them all up before we do the show. Oh, right, so just check. Just to check with Marcus. Just to check that from that's Banning. how he talks. Yeah. That's exactly how he talks. So when you get that person, so, like a double glazing salesman, that's actually Oliver Bridgewood. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you on the phone. Yeah, well. Well, there he is. Anyway, there he is. Marcus. Uh, he's got he's got a, a, a friend as well. Yeah. Loving, well, sort of admiringly looking down. Yeah, at that's the bike. A, that's a look of jealousy, isn't it? That from is. the, from the um, the more mature gentleman in the photo yeah. looking down at the. Actually, he's probably looking down and thinking, "Well, Marcus, your quick release skewer on the front wheel is on the wrong side." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, Marcus. I love that picture. I think it's just you know you're like, so chuffed with it, and and the other fellow is just right. like. That's a bike. Yeah. That is a bike. It's like a still from the film Breaking Away. Mm -hmm. If you've not seen Breaking Away, watch, watch it. it now. Yeah. Watch it after the show. Yeah, yeah, not, not now. <laughs> um, I've got one of you, actually, Ollie. What? Yeah, I've got one of you. Look at, look, there you are. This is Ollie, age six, and his Rally Mustang. Oh dear, oh dear. An exquisite tracksuit top <laughs> two. <laughs> look, he hasn't changed one bit. Well, slightly. Oh, I don't have that tracksuit anymore. Yeah, you've still got the same haircut. I <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I love that bike. <laughs> Tell us about the bike. Hey. Look at the tracksuit top. That's a great tracksuit, isn't it? I love that bike. Do you know what? I was, I was ahead of the times there. That's six speed, one by, one by. Look at those tan sidewall tyres. I mean, that was basically a modern gravel bike yeah. before gravel bikes were invented. Yeah. A trendsetter. Yeah, you look like Eddie the Eagle there. It's great, it's great. <laughs> right. There you go. You can't unsee that now. <laughs> right, new tech now. And firstly, French wheel specialist Mavic have just launched some new rims and hubs. First up though, the hubs, the MR801. They've had a complete and utter redesign from anything from Mavic previously, and there's actually fewer moving parts inside. Importantly, while well, there's only one spring inside of the free hub mechanism, which is opposed to the standard two that they had in there, and then there's even a noise reduction rubber, which, well, for those of you who've had some Mavic wheels out there in the past, sometimes they can scream a little bit. Basically, the free hub, it's got like a top hat washer design and it's just catching. A bit of a screech, so that's a welcomed addition. Yeah, they look really tidy though, these new wheels. Yeah. So there's two versions, there's the uh, Open Pros, which are 25 millimeters deep in rim brake and 32 millimeters deep in the disc brake version. And then there's the CXP Pro Carbons, which are 40 millimeters deep in the rim brake and 45 in the disc brake. And the other cool thing, right? All of them, UST tubeless ready. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Mm. They are, I just love a really shallow section carbon yeah. wheel. There's something about them. Yeah. Reminds me of the old Campag Hyperons, Zip 202s, that sort of thing. Yeah, I love yeah. my 202s. Good work, Mavic. Staying with wheels, and although they're not on a bicycle, it is important to say that Michelin, who actually were one of the first companies to make a bicycle tyre, have released a prototype of a tyre in conjunction with General Motors. Uptis, the unique puncture-proof tyre system. Yeah, it's, well, it's a prototype at the moment, and it's been created using 3D printing, and it eliminates what, well, punctures and blowouts. Pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. I mean, it begs the question, will we see this kind of technology appear on bicycle tires yeah. at some point? I mean, we've had solid tires in the past, but this is completely different to that. I mean, the ride quality on solid tires is nowhere near yeah. as good a, a, as a normal sort of pneumatic tire, and the rolling resistance is much higher. So it'll be interesting to see what the rolling resistance is like on these tires, but you can see they're clearly directional in yeah. terms of that construction in the in the graphic. Yeah, you wouldn't want to fit those on the wrong way round. No. If you did, I guess they would all just collapse. Or just go. Or, the, well, you just they would just sag like yeah, at all times. Yeah, but anyway, keep your eyes peeled for that one. A couple of new bikes now. First up, Factor Bikes. They've got a new frame, and it's called the Vam, and it's been developed after three years of data findings. And well, it's essentially 
very much a regeneration of the O2, which mm. was out there, but it's lighter and, well, a bike still needs to be nice and stiff too, and they reckon they've done it, but how? Well, they've optimised the structural design, meaning that they've not overused material anywhere where it's not needed, and they've also got an improved moulding process, which, well, has greater compaction and, mold and uses higher pressures, which eliminates excess resin uh, in the carbon layup as well. And the result is a sub 700 gram frame. And that is for a disc brake frame too, which is pretty impressive. And before you ask, yep, it comes in a rim brake version too. Everybody's happy. You happy? I'm happy. I want both though. It's no pleasing some people. Yeah, anyway, uh, finally, the State Bicycle Company, who are well, famed for their fixie and single speed bikes, have released their first road bike with gears, Ooh. the 4130 Road. 4130 referring to the specific type of chromoly, well, steel that the bike is, is made from. Yep. But look at that. That's really smart, isn't it? It looks, I just love how minimalistic it is with yeah. it, and retro it looks. Yeah, now this bike is not action packed and you know, full of tech. You're not gonna expect that really from a company who've specialized in fixie and single speeds, mm. really are. You know, they're going down that minimalistic route. So we've got a single chain ring on the front, just a 44 tooth, and then it's paired up with an 11 to 28 eight speed cassette on the rear and controlled with just a single down tube shifter. Nice. It looks really good, that. That's smart. Yeah, nice work. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit before, after models, pictures, sculptures, videos, <laughs> animations of your upgrades that you've done to your bikes or kit for the chance to win the ultimate prize. What can they win, John? They can win a GCN Camelback Eddy water bottle. Take it with you on your travels, you won't spill a drop. What's cool. not to well, like about that? Uh, it, yeah, I wasn't here last week. What did we have last week? Oh, right, well, we had David and his rosin, and we had Hamish and his giant Kadex that he found on a rubbish dump, basically. Uh, I thought it was gonna be really, really close fought out affair, but sadly, David beat the giant. Uh, and well, Goliath. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to go down that cheesy uh, caption because I know you love a cheesy caption. But anyway, David, get in touch with us, mate. 79% of the votes. Get in touch with us on Facebook. That's a, bit, that's a landslide. Yeah, it is. Yeah, landslide beat the landfill found bike. Right. Either way, that was a rubbish little uh, bit. Who have we got this week, Ollie? This week, we've got Chris from Seattle. Now, Chris has his Miata 710. Now that's a southern accent, but I rang yes. up Chris and checked. He is actually from the south and oh, he emigrated okay. to the, the north, the north area. Uh, west yeah. of America. I just like Seattle Seahawks, American <laughs> football myself. Anyway. Yeah. Fraser. As yeah. Well, that's there, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. Um, and Pearl Jam. Now, in 2005, Chris was burnt out from training and racing and he sold his bikes. And in 2014, after almost a decade out of the scene, the urge returned to Chris. That's good to hear, Chris. Yes, welcome back to the crew. And he began looking for a re-entry bike. Uh, and the agenda was something cheap that he wouldn't have to worry about. So he had his, this 84 Miata 710 on Craigslist for $200. He bought it, right? Nice. Uh, it had the original mix of components, except for the odd choice of some old Campag bits on it, yep. um, and a weird, weird saddle. So Chris decided it was time to take this lovely but sad looking beige bike and liven it up. Oh, I like the sound of this. Have a look at this, right? Right. What, what do you think? All right, so. There we go. Mavic Open Pro rims, Ultegra hubs, new Cellar Italia turbo saddle, bit of fluorescent sparkle, neon green. Whoa, deep purple. Whoa, look at that. So look, there it is, the old beige thing. There it is, all stripped of its bits and built up. Tell you what, that looks good, doesn't it? That's Not normally nice. a fan of brown bar tape and saddles, but... I know, it's, but it works, but it doesn't it? it pops, doesn't it, that? It does. It's very smart. Yeah. I like that green. I like, yeah, I was going to say, you don't see many green bikes, do you? Yeah, that's. I like that. Nice work, Chris. Mm. Right, okay. Ooh. Chris, though, faces Simon from Quebec in Canada. Hey. What? That's what they Chris say. Chris faces Simon from Quebec in Canada. Eh? 
You'll get it. All oh, right, okay. Right, when first getting into cycling, Simon's father gave him his 40-year-old Peugeot 10-speed bike. Simon wasn't a fan of reaching down to reach the shift levers and decided to modernise the bike. Simon bought an old Campagnolo Mirage group set on eBay. After stripping the old frame for what felt like an eternity, he could finally paint it and apply the brand new decals. Decals. Decals, whatever. Simon had to machine two mounts out of aluminium for the new brakes and welded a mount for the front derailleur too. So let's have a little look. There's the old center pull Peugeot brakes. Probably Wyman, but just rebrage Peugeot. They're, they're almost as good as the brakes on Peugeot cars. Steady. Right, so there's the old, look at the cracks the sidewalls are on those old oh, tires. Yeah. Head badge, love a head badge. Old nut attached, so right, very let's rusty, get in there. Very rusty chain. Yeah. It's got very, very big tri bars on the front there. But anyway, this is all pre, uh, pre revamp or pre upgrade. I tell you what, that is a great bit of machining that they've done on that front brake wow. caliper. That is a isn't it? proper basically... restoration job, yeah. that, isn't it? And it sprayed it, I like those decals. Decals. They are good, I mean. That is. It's, it's a beauty, isn't it? That's a great restoration job. Yeah, and it's the fact, you know, wanted to put a triple chain set on there and wouldn't have been that easy to actually make a mount specific for that frame and that front mech. It's tough this week, isn't it? Yeah, there's it's a two lot. excellent submission. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, that's someone who, a lot of people, they would just put some deep drop calipers on there and be like, I'm done with it. It's not like no. Delta Brick. No, it's not no Delta Simon from Quebec. No, it's not Delta. It's a mirror. Wash your yeah. mouth out. <laughs> I saw it, I saw it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Who's it going to be, though? Chris or Simon? Simon or Chris? Where are they going to vote? I've forgotten. That not side. Right. Right, we need to announce the winner of last week's special segment of Bike of the Week, where it was between two Giro d'Italia classification winning bikes, and it was the pink jersey bike of uh, Richard Carapaz. I forgot and, his name. Yeah, I did, yeah, <laughs> just total utter blur. Uh, and the 50 50 bike of Pascal Ackerman, who of course won the points jersey at the Giro. And the winner was Pascal Ackerman. There we are. Did oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, more than 50% of the votes. Yeah. Yeah, 50 50. Yeah. Do you like Lamar, that song, 50-50? Hey. No one. No one. Right, now time for the part of the show, the Bike Vault, where we rate your bikes either nice or super nice. So if you've got a picture of your bike in an absolutely beautiful location, please do submit it using the uploader tool found in the description below. And don't forget, please, to include your location. Mm. Not just my back garden, my backyard, my house. And what happens, Ollie, <laughs> when they get rated super nice? Well, well, yeah, they're either nice or super nice, but yeah. if it's super nice, ring the bell, and the bell gets rung, gets rung, and then they go in the, the vault. Yeah. This week, John will be ringing the bell. I will, yeah. Right, so who is first on the agenda this week? <laughs> this week, first up, we have got Mark with a C, from Salisbury in the UK. Oh. Uh, there's his Peugeot with, oh, look at that. That, that is, is one of the 753 bikes. That is Reynolds 753 great. tubes, I'm sure of it. I mean, that's, that is a beauty. That is, a, that is brilliant. Yeah, that's early 90s. Bit of, it a is little bit of, a little tube. bit of, of modern and retro combined there with, with the um, the elite Vico carbon bottle case. Yeah, as well as the carbon cranks, oh. carbon rear mech, carbon fork. Yeah. Campagnolo Zonda wheels. Oh, they were like basically. They're your favourites, aren't they? No, Chamals are. Basically, if you couldn't afford the Chamals, you had the Zondas, and if you or the Vento, Vento then Zonda, and I think there's another one. But he's got the Cinelli Integral to handlebars there, like. We we've talked about those before. Yeah, yeah. You used to be able to put a picture on the top. It's got a modern saddle. I mean, comfort is key. That that's a cracker, it's, isn't it? it's a beauty, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Was, yeah. Well, it's getting it's getting a ring. Nice one, Mark in Salisbury. Right. Who's next, next up? up is uh, Dion in the Morn Mountains, Northern Ireland. Apparently, this is where the Game of Thrones is filmed. I wouldn't know. I don't watch that. Do you watch that Game of Thrones? Um, I, I have watched Game of Thrones before. I've and never watched it. This is his vine. Not interesting. Dungeons and Dragons. Six. Right. Made. SRAM Force on there. 
Vision yeah. Wales. What do you reckon, John? We'll go back up. Let's have a look. It does look like a nice place, that. Yeah. Um. Mm. I don't know, really. The, just the angle of it is a bit... The back wheel looks small. Yeah, I think... You do need to get them square on, don't you? I think it you always looks better. Always presents it in the best light. Square on. You've got to go forty-five or maybe thirty degrees mm. or ninety head on or flat on. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a nice it's a nice bike though, isn't it? That yeah. You know, there's no extras being chucked on there. You know, it doesn't look like you've ram raided a bike shop. You know, with your bike covered in super glue. I mean, he's, he's, does he's, it? Yeah. Oh, there's nothing worse than that, is there? He's, I mean, he's removed the appendages as well. Always like to see that. There's no. Yeah. You know, saddlebag on there. That's always, nope. always going to earn you a few points. And he's not got excess steerer nope. above there, so he's, he's, you know, he's ticking along. Getting there. there. It's getting there. Oh, it's just for me personally. It's just got to be a little bit more. Right. That's a nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got John from Maloola Bar on the Sunshine Coast West. in Australia. Maloola Bar. I know how to say that. I've been there, the Sunshine Coast. I actually love it. John, invite me out to stay, my friend. Love it there. Wow. I, I rented a, a, a swan pedalo there. That's a, that's a, I've not seen a bike like that yeah, before. It's, that's uh, so it's cool. a Carrera Custom, apparently. It's, it's a beauty, isn't it? It's that's, got one of those internal wedge um, seat posts. Yeah, that saddle is uh, very, very minimalist, yeah. isn't it? That's it's cool bike. That is a cool bike, isn't it? And he and he and he shot it. Beautiful. Great depth of field. I was just going to say, I knew you were going to come out with great your depth of field. Practical there. photographer monthly magazine quote yeah. there. You know, he's he's done a good good job there. Yeah. I like the golf racing style colours. Although the blue is not quite golf, is it? I know. But it's it's almost there. Victoria tyres. It looks like some of the old Corsa CXs, I think. Be interested. I don't know what those wheels are. I don't recognise those. Be interested no. to know what they are. The back one, at first glance, looks like a lightweight, doesn't it? Time but espresso old. pedals. They're lightweight, aren't they? Very light, yeah. Espresso eight. It's got on there. Right. I don't know what the wheels are. Though. I like that he's colour matched his stems. Right? Yeah, and the, oh, yeah. Well, everything on it is colour matched, isn't it? In a way. I think that's a super nice. Yeah, thing. we'll give it a ring. John, don't forget flight tickets and all that for Malula Bar. All right. Right. Who's up next? Uh. I'm not going to be able Peter. to. It's Peter. It's Peter. Yeah. Peter. Peter. Peter from, from Warsaw. Warsaw in Poland. And he's at the local pump track on his way to work um, in a very snowy scene. Yeah. This is his Boardman, Boardman Hybrid Team 2014. And it's a roadie conversion. So what, it's a flat done, bar to road bike yeah, conversion. That's done really well, isn't it? That is a cracking I, You know, I would never know that was what, a conversion. Bon you? No, no. Bonus points as well. Go on. GCM water bottle propping it up. <laughs> <laughs> Good can't, you can't get past Ollie. Good one. You can't you can't try and sneak anything past him. Great work. Yeah. Great work. They're, they're gravel bars, aren't they? Look at the look at the flare on those. You yeah. Top of that lever angle. Again, good depth of field. Yes. I feel excellent depth of field. Is that Great. Right? I think yeah. the, uh, for me they're it's super it, nice. Yeah, super nice, definitely, mate. That's a really nice looking bike. Cool. Yeah. That's oh, nice. God, I'm yeah. about memories. I went to Warsaw in the snow once. It's it was just... absolutely freeze. It's just proper functional, that bike. Yeah. Isn't it? It's just, great. It's wicked. Yeah, love it. Is that? Yeah. Is it like a chrome style paint? Or not? Yeah. I've got a feeling they were, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ring of the bell. And who is the final one this week? David at the Denver City Park Criterium. Yeah, mm. I think, oh yeah, I remember this David, I'm pretty sure he actually hand built that frame himself. Culbertson frame, 001, made out of Columbus SL tubes. Looks like record, well, definitely record hubs. So I'll tell you, that sharing. water bottle is intriguing me. It looks like he's got a bottle of personal washing detergent attached those, to it. Once bike. again, Ollie, those who know, know. That is the Campagnolo. I think it was called the Bio Aerodynamica water bottle. Yeah. Uh, heavily used by time, actually, Back in the early 2000s, I've got a feeling that Armstrong rode a time trial in the Tour de France with one of those on. And then ultimately it led to the uh, development by Elite and Gatorade, all these people and tax to start making that shaped bottle again. Cool. An interesting bit of bike trivia there. Yeah, and well. Really interesting. Good for the Daz Doorstep Challenge as well. Great depth of field once again. Yeah. Some strong depth of field because this look, week. Look, in the background, that is a race. Is that happening? Actually a race happening. <laughs> that isn't that isn't some yeah, I mean, like cool art. That is going the extra mile, yeah. isn't it? To get the blurry cyclists in the background. Yeah. 
action shot. Yeah, but great. But the right frame, uh, the shutter speed. Oh, is that correct? Yeah, the right shutter speed to actually be able to capture it, and we can tell. Look, there's a canyon on the right. I reckon. Do you uh, yeah, it's like a canyon I mean, logo. Don't know. Brilliant. Yeah, that is a. That's a. That's it's a, a gorgeous. Oh, regal saddle. Probably one of the most comfortable saddles I've ever used in my life. That's just a back there, brilliant. You like that, don't you? And you're not a big I retro really bike like fan, that. are you? I, I'd, I'd ride that. There we are, David. Send it on over to Mr. Bridgewood. Yeah, I'll take it off your hands. Yeah. Thanks, David. That's yeah. super nice for me. Yep, yeah. super nice. <laughs> Remember, use that uploader tool. Get involved. We love looking through these, don't we? Still ringing. David, that was a super, super nice. <laughs> <laughs>